Hi folks, I'm Michael from Virtual Shape and I've created this video to show you some basics of reverse engineering in Rhino using the VSR tools. What I've got here is a mesh from a beach buggy. It has a typical quality, so there are holes, dents from the original model and measuring errors. When I'm reverse engineering a model, I'm starting with the biggest surfaces defining the global shape. In the case of the speech buggy, it would be the side surface here. I'm switching to shaded view now because I'd like to see the structure of the mesh. As the surface I want to create has a pretty simple shape and as I can easily see where to put it, the best function to use for this is surface from points. Like many other functions in VSR Shape Modeling 2.0, there's an option called Use Projection Base. This option is grayed out at the moment because I haven't defined it yet. As you can see, the tooltip tells me to select the Global Projection Base in the Shape Options dialog. This dialog is available via the blue eye in the Shape Modeling toolbar. When clicking on it, a new window opens and by clicking on the Select button down here, you are starting the selection for the Global Projection Base. Once I've selected the mesh, it is highlighted. If wanted, I can switch off this highlight by deactivating the Display option in the Shape Options dialog. You can now use this projection base in every function supporting it, without having to select it again. When creating a surface on a mesh, I'm always starting with the lowest possible degree for this. I'm then placing the four corner points roughly where I think the surface should be. I can use several indicators for these positions. For example, in the upper left corner, I'm using the light reflecting on the mesh to see where the curvature changes. When changing to rendered mode, you can see that this is an area where probably a blend has been created during the initial design. For the lower corner here, I'm using the fact that the mesh tessellation changes in this area, also an indicator of changing curvature. Once I'm satisfied with the position of my corner points, I can start to raise the degree of the surface using the feedback of the integrated deviation analysis to judge what is needed for this area. I am always switching between U and V, making steps of one or two order increases until I am satisfied with the reach deviation. I am using layers with different colors so I can easily see where I have already created surfaces. I will now create another surface in the lower part here using the same procedure. These two surfaces will then be used for surface blend, so I'm taking care that the edges of them are at least roughly aligned. When two surfaces are in the same area, defining a similar shape, it is always a good idea to give them the same degree, as this makes life easier later on and as they should be able to reach the same deviation then. If this is not the case, you should check if the edges of the surfaces are at the correct positions, which means areas of curvature change. Once you've covered the big, moderately curved areas with surfaces, you can start to create blends or fillets to close the gaps. I'm using the VSR surface blend function here to create a connection with curvature continuity. Ok, let's switch to wireframe so you can see the blend better. One nice feature when working with the VSR functions is the fact that you can already select geometry which you are just creating at the moment for analysis functions. This allows me to define a deviation analysis between my mesh and my surface blend I'm currently working on. To allow the selection of the blend, make sure that the option Allow Selection in the VSR Shape options is activated.
Let's hide this mesh for the moment. If I now modify the shape of the blend, you can see that the analysis updates allowing me to find the best shape for being close to the mesh. But this is not the only option I've got. Maybe the input edges are not in a perfect position. To check this, I can select the input surfaces of the blend for control point modeling and pull them back or forward using the option Extrapolate. I can use the local undo redo steps to jump to the result with the best deviation. Ok, that's it for the first part of reverse engineering in Rhino using VSR tools. In the next part I will cover how to do the same for more complex areas. You can download a 3 weeks test version of VSR Shape Modeling 2.0 at www.virtualshape.com. Thank you for watching.